asthma basics. Asthma is a long-term disease of the lungs. It causes airways to get inflamed and narrow. It makes it hard to breathe. Severe asthma can cause trouble talking and being active. There are a few questions you can ask to find out if your child's asthma is under control or not. These questions will help you determine if a child's asthma needs more attention by a medical professional. These questions are also called the rules of two. Does your child need a quick relief inhaler or rescue medicine more than two times a week? Does the child awaken at night with asthma symptoms more than two times a month? Does the child's rescue inhaler need to be refilled more than two times a year? Other questions that indicate there is a problem with the child's asthma is if they are missing school or childcare due to asthma symptoms. Is the child able to run and play like other children without asthma? Does the child go to urgent care or emergency room for asthma attacks? If you answered yes to any of these questions, the child should see their doctor for an asthma checkup. Looking at the pictures, there's a normal bronchial on the left and an asthmatic bronchial on the right. A bronchial is a small tube inside the lungs that air moves through when you breathe. A child with active asthma has three characteristics inside their lungs. Swelling, mucus, hypersecretion is just a fancy word for mucus, and tightness, which is also called a muscle spasm. This is important to understand because controlling swelling mucus and tightness means having good asthma control and that means a kid can be a normal kid or as normal as possible to run learn and play like other kids their age now let's talk about the types of asthma medicines medicine that a child takes for asthma works to control the swelling mucus and tightness there are two groups of asthma medicines, rescue medicine, which is also called quick relief medicine, and controller medicine that contains a steroid. The only thing that the rescue medicine does is loosen the tightness of the small airways or bronchioles. It doesn't help decrease the swelling or mucus. You can think of rescue medicines as rescuing a child from a tight squeeze. On the other hand, the controller or steroid medicine helps to decrease the swelling and mucus inside the bronchioles. The controller medicine does not loosen the tightness around the outside of the bronchioles. Next, we will watch a video that helps explain this. Hi, my name is Alex Thomas. I am an allergy doctor, but I'm also someone with asthma. And today I wanna to talk about asthma and how it affects our lungs. I also want to talk about how medications work to make us feel better. So let's take a look inside my lungs. One way to think about lungs is as a network of branches that start with one main branch that splits into two branches and continues on with more and more branches that eventually get so small they can only be seen under a microscope. Now, let's take a look at one branch of the smallest size. We're going to zoom in and see what this airway would look like up close. First off, there are muscle bands on the outside of the airway, and they are nice and relaxed when your asthma is under control and nothing active is going on in terms of the disease process. The other important part of the airway is the inside. In a normal airway, when your asthma is under control, the inside of the airway is wide open. When the airway is open like this, the air can move through the airway and in and out of your lungs very easily. In asthma, there are three things that are going on inside the small airways that make it difficult to breathe. First, the muscle bands tighten around the airway. These muscle bands are squeezing together in response to a trigger, such as an allergen, an irritant, exercise, or cold air. There are lots of different things that can make the muscle bands tighten up, and when that happens, the airway gets narrower because of the tightness. 
and it really squeezes things closed. The second thing that goes on with asthma is that you have inflammation within the airway. So rather than a nice open space for the air to move through, you have swelling within the airway that narrows the inside. The third thing is that mucus inside the airway starts to plug things up. And now, with this opening much smaller than normal, there is less room for the air to go in and out, and it is much more difficult for you to breathe. This is what an asthma attack looks like. To help treat an asthma attack, we first need a rescue inhaler. A rescue inhaler works in minutes and only lasts a few hours. And what the medication in this rescue inhaler does, and the only thing it does, is work on these muscle bands. And the way it works is by loosening the muscle bands. So let's see what that would look like. So now the muscle bands are loosening and the airway is once again more open. But there is still swelling because the inflammation doesn't go away with the rescue inhaler. So to really open up this airway, to reduce the inflammation, you need a controller inhaler. A controller works over days, but lasts much longer. And that's important. What the medication in a controller does is decrease inflammation in the airway. And it works in this area of the airway. Over days of using a controller on a daily basis, the inflammation will decrease, the swelling will go down, and the airway will become more open over time. And finally, with asthma back under control, the airway is able to have air come in and out much easier. So now you have an airway that is open and similar to a normal airway. Asthma has zones, three zones to be more specific. You can think of asthma zones like a traffic light. The green zone is when the asthma is under control. There are no asthma symptoms and the child can keep on running playing and learning. The yellow zone is when the asthma symptoms start appearing. You may hear an occasional cough that is progressively getting worse, or the child may stop playing due to being short of breath. The yellow zone is a time to slow down and follow the asthma action plan. A child in the yellow zone could benefit from stopping any activity they are doing and taking a few puffs of their rescue inhaler. Hopefully the child will return into the green zone. They may also go into the red zone if the symptoms become more severe. The red zone is a serious event and means a trip to the emergency room. Be prepared. Keep a special eye on children with asthma and have easy access to their rescue medication. Treating symptoms promptly can prevent an asthma emergency and allow the child to resume normal activities. Asthma signs and symptoms follow the asthma, green, yellow, and red zones. In the green zone, which is the go zone, breathing is easy. There's not any coughing or wheezing. The child is sleeping well, and he or she can be active without breathing problems. The yellow zone or the slow down zone symptoms include coughing, mild wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and coughing at night. Other signs and symptoms in the yellow zone that you may not have heard of include having dark circles under the eyes, being pale, tired, or feeling weak, having an itchy chin, that one is actually very common, having an itchy, scratchy throat, or clearing the throat a lot. A nose that is runny, stuffy, or rubbed a lot is a sign, and sometimes the nose is rubbed, rubbed so much there is a line across the top of their nose. Additional signs and symptoms include sneezing, stomach aches or headaches, mood changes like being extra grouchy, extra quiet or restless, or having an eczema or a rash flare up. The red zone or the stop zone means call 911. If the child has any of these danger signs, the child's lips or fingernails are blue, the child does not respond to you, the child's skin is sucked in around his or her neck or ribs while breathing in, the child has trouble walking or talking due to shortness of breath, breathing is hard and fast, or there's a lot of coughing, 
In addition to the red zone signs and symptoms is when the nose flares, the nostrils open wide, the child might be hunched over, and the rescue medicine is not helping at this point. Asthma is a burden being the most common chronic condition among children. One of every 12 children has asthma. Children with asthma are generally less active than other children without asthma. About half of children with asthma experience problems with getting a good night's sleep, tending to wake up frequently due to coughing or other asthma symptoms and wake up earlier than expected. Asthma is expensive to the tune of about $82 billion, which includes medical costs and loss of work and school days. Here are some facts about asthma. Asthma is a chronic health condition, which means it is a lifelong disease. When asthma flares up, a child is considered to be having an asthma attack. During times with few or no symptoms, a child with asthma is considered in remission. During remissions, it may be believed that a child has outgrown asthma, but those sensitive airways may flare back up in adulthood. There is no cure for asthma, but it can be controlled. There is hope for kids with asthma and adults that care for them. Asthma can be managed where children live, learn, and play. Managing asthma at home, school, and at childcare can create healthier children.